Welcome to the April 26th Northgate Bible Chapel Family Hour. We're doing this by video as we are in COVID-19 quarantine. This morning, I'm going to be sharing with you a uh, PowerPoint presentation. So I'm just going to get that set up right this second. And there we go. This message is entitled More Lessons in Quarantine. Now I chose this because it's a continuation of a variety of other messages that have been given in the last uh, two months. For the most of uh, March and, and all of April, we've been in this COVID-19 quarantine. Hopefully this is a once in a lifetime type of situation with a huge impact on every area of our lives. And due to that, a number of these messages have been focused on dealing with this particular topic. And I believe the Lord's been leading me in that direction as well. So I'd like to build off of um, the March 28th message that uh, Jeff Willard gave on uh, kindness as one of the uh, fruits of the spirit. And he was giving us a word of encouragement of how he's seen this assembly act in very kind ways since the beginning of this. Uh, John Benson uh, on April 5th had titled his message, Lessons Learned in Isolation. Now, my situation is a little bit different, so I was entitling this uh, More Lessons in Quarantine. Um, much of my experience within uh, the last couple of months has been um, of going in the opposite direction. Because of uh, the work that I'm in, I've been pulled into a lot of hospitals in the last two months that has added a lot of uh, stress and tiredness and anxiety to my life. But then last week, uh, Rich Greer's message on fixing our eyes on Jesus, focusing on the solution of the Lord Jesus Christ as opposed to the problems that we've been dealing with. These are all th concepts that I think the Lord has been working on my heart as well and dro drawn me to this particular topic. And where I am uh, and where the Lord has had me in the last uh, few months is in John chapter 15, verse 11. Now, this is a, a verse that... Um, if you read it quickly, it's it, it's it's easy to lose the impact. And I know I've read this many, many times over the years. And as I've done so, um, I, I've had to force myself to, to slow down and to focus on it and to go word by word in this short sentence here. And if you're feeling much of the same way as I am, hopefully you'll do this with me. The, the verse reads, these things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your your joy may be full. Now, it's this idea of joy that the Lord has really attracted me to. As I've been putting this uh, message together, um, the Lord has helped me to realize that a lot of what I've been struggling with in the last couple of months uh, regarding this COVID-19 pandemic, all the changes that have gone on, the unknowns that have come into uh, every area of our lives, um, he's reminded me time and time again that he remains in control. And as I turn my attention to this particular verse, as I slow down and I focus on it, there's a few truths that I wanted to pull out here that would help us uh, really focus in on what the Lord is uh, speaking to, uh, here. The first is that it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who is speaking to you and I. He says, I have spoken to you. And as he does so, he's talking about two joys. The first is my joy coming from his perspective, God's joy. And the second is our own joy. Now, this word joy is being used twice here. And it's the same Greek word, chara. And it means to delight or to give reason for gladness. It's not necessarily a feeling. That's a result. It, joy is something you choose. It's not something that happens to you. It's the end result of uh, a significant situation or a... Uh, 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 perseverance, endurance, um, or even in a difficult situation like we're in right now, where you choose to focus on what we're going to talk about here uh, more and more is the long game, not being caught up in the short-term problems, not being caught up in the emotion of the situation, not being caught up in the things that we cannot control, but putting um, on the full armor of God, being focused on, on what we know is to be true, and the, the having faith in the plan of salvation that the Lord's given us and knowing how this is going to end, going all the way to the end of Revelation from that standpoint. So as we go back to this idea of joy, notice that uh, in the two, one is owned by God and one is owned by you and I. 
And then lastly here, these two joys are not guaranteed. It, the, this, the phrase, my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full um, are conditional because that they may not be true. That may not happen. And there's a, there's a very specific reason for that. And the, the verse starts off with the phrase, these things. It points to context. This particular sentence does not have uh, uh, any um, merit on its own unless you take it in context of John chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. And I would like to uh, do that a little bit farther down in this message. But before we do, I want to focus a little bit on, on the problem. Now, Rich did a great job last week of bringing uh, out this particular truth. And I'd like to build off that by taking a little bit of talking a little bit about my journey in this quarantine, um, this co uh, coronavirus quarantine. As I mentioned, uh, I am tired. I, I've been somewhat stressed, certainly anxious, um, as uh, this has unfolded going back to the beginning of March. Uh, I was pulled more and more into uh, hospitals that needed beds up and running that needed their system, their IT system up and running as they're planning for an influx of COVID-19 patients. It meant long days. It meant uh, uh, projects that needed to be fast-tracked. It meant that uh, what we had planned and, the, uh, and how we were going to handle that um, all changed uh, very, very quickly. And uh, a lot of this was outside of my control. And as I, I think about uh, how it's impacted my family, how it's impacted our church family here at Northgate Bible Chapel, how it's impacted, you know, our extended families, uh, a lot of stress that goes in, into all that, a lot of worry. And, um, and looking at how our, the economy globally, you know, nationally, but also here locally has shut down, the, the impact of that is going to be felt for years to come. And, and that causes me a lot of concern. So then how am I supposed to be joyful in this uncertainty? You know, you can look at what it, the, the media is talking about, all the negativity that goes along with it. So the truth, though, if we come back to the biblical truth, the joy that we're talking about here, the joy of Jesus didn't change. I did. I'm letting these external circumstances, my emotions, my short term thinking, all of that is influencing me. I'm certainly too close to the problem, and I'm invested in um, a solution that will make me feel better. And in a lot of ways, it, the, my perspective here has me feeling a lot like Peter. And I'd like to look at Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 23. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to ask you to stop the video and, and read this passage. And after you have, just come back, because I don't want to go through this verse by verse. But and it's a very familiar passage to it, but there's a few things that I'd really like to uh, pull out of this. The thing about Peter here, as I'm, I'm looking at this, is that he is in a, a really unique situation. Um, the, uh, the Lord Jesus in verse 29 has said to him, come. And when Peter had come to him out of the boat, he walked on the water. Now, that is incredible in and of itself. You know, the guy was walking on water, but that is until he wasn't. He takes his eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. He lets fear creep into his heart. He allows the external circumstances of life. In this instance, it's the, the waves and the wind and everything that goes along with it. That influences him. It makes him think about the, the, the quick, the short term. It's got, it got him focused on the problem, and then he sinks. But the best part of this story is that Peter cries out, Lord, save me. And that is exactly what the Lord did. Now, right around the corner here, we have the week of prayer that's coming up. And um, I encourage all of us to attend as much as we possibly can. But I think it would be important to note here that this phrase, Lord, save me, that in of itself is a prayer. <laughs> it's short. It's poignant. And the Lord responds. That's the best part of all of this, that the Lord desires a relationship with us. So as Peter is walking on the water here, the fear of um, in verse 30 creeps into him. He, he sinks, starts sinking into the choppy sea. And the Lord, he cries out to the Lord. The Lord saves him. And then in verse 31, immediately the Lord Jesus stretched out his hands and catches him and says to him, Oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? And they got into the boat and the wind ceased. 
Now, I may be projecting here, but I find it hard to believe that once Peter was pulled out of these waves, that he must have been delighted and extremely focused on the reason for his gladness, going back to that definition of chara that we talked about previously, the, the definition, the Greek word for joy. The, that Peter was having joy, delight in his Lord and Savior, having that feeling of joy that's going to come from the fact that he uh, was in a, a, a desperate situation, but the Lord pulled him out of it. Now, as I examine my situation, as I'm talking about the, the fear and the anxiety and the stress that I'm feeling, I find myself struggling with the conflict between fear and faith, much of, what, of like what Peter is doing here. And as a, if I'm being critical of myself, I, I keep thinking of it. This is these are basic things. This is Christianity 101. I know this stuff, but why am I not living it? Why am I struggling with this? I, and, and that's a thought that's been plaguing me a little bit. And, and as I've gone through this particular message and preparing for it, I have found a lot of peace. Because I think the Lord has shown me exactly what I need to be focusing on in the, the days and the weeks to come. And part of it here is we find in the fruits of the spirit. In Galatians chapter five, about a month ago, uh, Jeff Willard was teaching on the fruits of the spirit, and he focused specifically on kindness. And again, the uh, encouraging us for the amount of kindness that he has seen uh, the saints at Northgate show as an assembly in reacting to this sudden isolation. Now I have us back here on this verse to focus on uh, again another basic truth that the Holy Spirit working in my life as a believer. That when I am being spirit led, these are the, the characteristics that I'm going to produce. I will be producing joy. But if I'm going to be honest with you, that it, as, as I was focusing on this and while I was studying this is because I'm not experiencing joy. And I, I've been forced to ask myself why. And I think this is where the Lord is taking me for as a, a solution. I needed to be reminded that joy is not a feeling. It's a decision. Because we're in a spiritual battle right now. Ephesians 6, 12 says, If we would not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. From a, from a virus perspective, we may be talking about life and death, but the, the Lord Jesus Christ conquered death and when he rose from the dead. From an economic standpoint, all of these resources that we have, the, the, the money, the jobs that are lost, they've all been given to us by the Lord in the first place. And he's asked us to be good stewards of them. So if they are his good things to give us, they're also his good things to take away. Now, from a government standpoint, the Lord has asked us to obey the, our, the leaders uh, that we are under, unless they're asking us to do something unbiblical. And as we look at the the broader context of Ephesians chapter 6, the Lord has given us the full armor of, the, of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, what's going on here is if we look at this differently, we're not talking about playing a short game here where we have these everyday comforts and they've been taken away from us and then we're struggling with that. Really what we're talking about here is a long-term fight this is the glory of God that we're talking about and his eternal plan. Satan is attacking us. He's using us in a, using a variety of different uh, methods to do that. Is this one of them? It sure seems that way with the coronavirus and all the responses that are going um, and, and the, the isolation and the request that we not meet together as, as we've been called to do and everything that goes along with it. It's being pulling up so many emotions. But that is short-term thinking. As we, as we come to the idea of really what we're focused upon here, what we're struggling with, what I'm struggling with, is this idea that um, I can respond in fear or I can respond in faith. And if I'm going to look at this as a spiritual battle, I really only have one choice, right? I can only... I can only respond in faith. <clears throat> As these in external circumstances are pressing on us, the, the, the Holy Spirit is able to produce joy in us when we allow him to do that. The moment we, that we, we take the wheel from him, the moment that we step in and say, I've got this, 
that he's going to allow us. And in our humanness, in our human nature, that's when the fear kicks in. That's where we seem to be taking in control, saying, Lord, I, I got this. I know what's going on. I, I know better than you. And that's not what the Lord is asking us to do. <clears throat> the thing about fear and faith, though, they're very closely aligned. Both require a belief that something hasn't happened yet. At its core, fear assumes a negative result and faith assumes a positive result. And if we look at this from a, a spiritual standpoint, that really gets us back to the, our, our verse, John 15, verse 11. But we need to look at it in context. If we look at it in context, we see that my faith is in God. My faith is in the power of the Holy Spirit. My faith is in the fact that God has allowed these external circumstances to happen to me for a very good reason. My faith is that when I read the book of Revelation, I know how it's all going to end. I look at Revelation 21, 22, I know that God wins. My faith is that I get to expend, spend eternity with him. From God's perspective, not mine, but from God's perspective, I have nothing to fear. Right? That's, that's true. Yet, I have a lifetime of experiences that shows me that I can't do this. I don't have enough self-discipline. I don't have enough grit. I don't have drive. I don't have the strength to do it on my own. Which why we have to go back to John chapter 15 in context. So as we look at verses 1 through 11, I'm going to ask you again to, to stop the video and to read this passage. And then after you've read that, start it again and we'll jump, we'll jump in. In the first five verses here, Jesus is telling us that he is the vine. And that since I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I am one of the branches. So me as a branch, I connect to the vine. That is my source of life, of, of everything. And as a result, I produce fruit. I, re, I produce that fruit because I abide in him. And this word abide means to stay, to remain, to continue, to conform. I don't produce fruit unless I am closely and intimately connected with the vine himself. And this uh, verse five here is one of uh, my favorite verses because it's a very direct statement. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. For without God, I can do nothing. That's a strong statement. Without God, I have no chance against my fear. But with God, my joy may remain in me. Jumping down to verse 11. See, the, the connection here is that our joy is meant to, to and is designed to not come and go. It's supposed to be constant. It's supposed to remain. Just as you're supposed to remain connected to the, the vine, you as the branch. How does this all rem uh, remain together? How does this all work? Well, it comes to this idea of uh, abiding in God, abiding in the vine each and every day. Experiencing life with Jesus. When I do this, when I experience life on, on an everyday sort of basis, my fear has no chance. So what I want to do here is give you an example. So this example that I'm going to take a look at here has uh, two disciples who are struggling with their external circumstances, much like we are right now. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but I think for the purpose of this, uh, you'll see where I'm going. Now, they had an experience with Jesus that resulted in a lasting joy. And that is on the road to Emmaus. So if you could stop the video here and, and read uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 32, and then we'll pick up uh, after you've done that. So the story here is the, the two disciples, it's after uh, the Lord has been crucified and uh, it's during his resurrection. He has risen from the dead and now he's appearing to specific disciples. Um, and as they're walking to Emmaus, you see in verses uh, 13 uh, through 16 that they're talking with one another. Verse 17, the Lord Jesus Christ asked them, what kind of conversation is this that you have one with another as you walk and are sad. 
So they're talking about all the bad things that have been happening and they're really emotionally invested here. You know, you see the word sad and the way that they're responding to all of this, very similar to what we're dealing with right now. And then we see in verse uh, uh, 18 and 19, uh, they continue on the conversation and the Lord asks them what things. Um, <clears throat> so then they give a bit more of the um, perspective that they're coming from. So they said to him, these things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, uh, mighty indeed, and in, in word before God and all the people. And then they go on to uh, their summary of the situation and how it uh, manifested itself. Then in verse 25, he said to them, oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe. Again, we're talking about faith here. And all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things? Again, we're coming to the idea of suffering right now and to enter into his glory. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in the scriptures the things concerning himself. <clears throat> the, the, as it goes on here in verse 28, um, going into 29, note the word abide. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that as he would have gone further, but they constrained him saying, abide with us. Going back to that John 15 idea, stay with us. They wanted to be connected with the Savior, the branch to the vine. We can do nothing aside from Christ who strengthens us. But he goes on to say, abide with us for his toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass as they sat at the table with them. He took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished from their sight. So this ties back very nicely to uh, the April 4th message that our brother John Benson gave um, on uh, Acts 242 and the, the lessons of isolation that he was talking about. So we're seeing a lot of the, 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 the steps and the, the, the tools that God has given us and from, from uh, Rich and from Jeff and from um, John as well. So what I'm hoping to do here is give you a bit of the, the framework around that uh, of how we are supposed to be uh, looking at these times the, uh, that we're in right now. Because verse 32 ends, and this is where I was kind of coming to. And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures with us? That certainly sounds like joy to me. As they were uh, thinking about the delight and the reason for gladness, it went back to the person, the experience with Jesus. Now, this was an everyday experience. These two had gone on uh, a, a walk together. They're going to Emmaus. But they added by adding a, a meaningful experience uh, with Jesus, it turned into pure joy. The fear, the sadness, and the anxiety, they all melted away. That's the experience that we're looking for. As we go through these struggles of life, as we're dealing with uh, so much uncertainty right now. As I, I started this by, um, by confessing to you that I've been struggling with joy lately. In essence, what I was saying, and, I, and the point I, I want to get to here is as we deal with our problems, we're in a lot of ways saying, we just don't like the current challenges that we're in. I want an easier life. But that's really not realistic. If we come to Psalm chapter 23, and I, I want to focus on uh, verse 4, but I would encourage you to stop the video here and read the entire psalm. But picking up um, in verse 4, we're promised, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We are not being promised here a trouble-free uh, life. The path is going through the valley of the shadow of death. But as a believer, I am promised that God is going to go with me every step of the way. As I go through tough times, he's going to comfort me along the way. These hardships that we're going through, they require endurance. And that's where Rich uh, had us last week into Hebrews chapter 12. He was looking at verses 1 through 2. 
Now, I normally don't re read uh, the NLT version, but I really liked what it was saying here, so I'm sharing it with you. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race of God that is set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. So to build off of what Rich was talking about last week, the problem of taking our eyes off Jesus, that's when we're, we're so solution focused. That's, I'm sorry. When we have our eyes on Jesus, that is when we are solution focused, when we are faith based, when we see the world from God's perspective. And when we take our eyes off Jesus, we became problem focused. We became, we come short sighted. We, we get caught up in the emotion. We can't see beyond ourselves. But here we have the example of God, God himself. He endured the cross. He disregarded the shame. Why? Because of the joy that was waiting before him. This is what brings what we're going through right now meaning. Our delight, our reason for gladness is actually, as we, to quote the end of verse two, is now seated in place of honor besides God's throne. He is our joy. In this spiritual battle, we're called to play this long game just as Jesus was because of the joy awaiting him, because of God's honor, because of God's plan, because how we know this all is all going to end, what we're going through in these trying times right now, it is pales in comparison to what the, 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 the blessings that the Lord has for us in the, in the age to come. So when we have this focus, when we look at it this way, when we are living by faith, not by fear, we are then a living witness to the power of God. So verse 1 of Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of, crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, that's in essence what we are. We're, we're a witness to the life of faith. So when we have this positive attitude, going through these difficult times right now and other people see it that's when they start asking us questions why are you handling this self isolation so well when everyone else isn't well let me tell you about the gospel let me tell you about the 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 fruit of the spirit let me tell you about how i know something better is coming and that's when you're going to be ready in season to share the gospel in a time of uncertainty so to close these thoughts here, um, our time of trouble-free fellowship with God is actually in the future. That, that, that easy life that we so want today, <laughs> that's Revelation 21. That's coming. We're going to have no tears, no death, no sorrow, no pain. The former things will have passed away. In the meantime, we're fixing our eyes on Jesus. And remember that we have a choice. And our choice is to live by faith, not by fear. And now, along those lines, as we live this life, attitude is everything. We're going through some trying times right now. But God's word has given us some very practical ways that we can live for him. We can show the world his glory. We can be this witness that he has called us to do. And uh, Brother Jeff talked about that on March 28th a little bit, where he talked about us showing kindness. Now, here's some more. Now, this is not an exhaustive list but it's a good place to start. Remember that the Lord is asking us to believe unto salvation, John 3.16. Remember that he desires us to repent of sin. These are things that uh, we can continue to do now. He desires that we should pray regularly and that we should pray without ceasing and that being complete dependent on God without giving up. We keep praying, we keep praying, and we keep praying. We should be practicing gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5.16. We should serve each other. Mark chapter 10, verses 42 through 45. 
we've been created as unique individuals in God's image, Ephesians 2 10. So just be yourself. And that's saying that more for me than anybody else. I just got to be me because this is the way the Lord made me. And in 1 Peter 3 15, that we keep things right with God. We we're, we're so in love with him. We can't help but talk about him, not because I have to, but because I want to. And if I'm I'm putting things all into perspective here, Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7, just don't worry. <laughs> the Lord's got a plan. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Take it one day at a time, Matthew 6, verses 33 through 34. And be a person of action by doing good things, James 1, 22 through 25. Again, this is not an exhaustive list, but these are really very real, very practical ways that we're going to be able to live by faith here and now, every day, meeting Jesus where we're at. And when we get to those difficult situations, turn to God. Remember his perspective. Don't live by fear. Live by faith. Love you all. Look forward to seeing you soon. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. And as this ends, I look forward to that uh, renewed fellowship that will be super sweet with each other. Have a good day. Bye.